There is no way under the sun that I would be anything close to what I actually am today without Auburn. Melissa Hertz graduated from Auburn in 1977, having come from a small family background. She came to Auburn with a desire to see the world and a love for engineering. I have to say my mother instilled a passion for going and seeing, seeing the world in me. You know, it was like, join the Navy, see the world kind of thing. I joined Exxon and saw the world. And I think I was influenced by my dad because he was a draftsman in a civil engineering company based in Atlanta, but they had an office in Gadsden, which is where both my parents were from. Melissa is proof that the co-op program at Auburn can and does lead to great things. I needed financial help to go to university, and Auburn found a way to offer that to me. Combining co-oping where I could work and save money, and then be able to go to school and focus on my studies while I was at school because I had saved and because I had scholarship money was uh, incredible for me. I left, I left Auburn without debt. Being the first female co-op student at Auburn, Melissa then went on to become the first female engineer posted overseas by Exxon. This position led her to set up several billion dollar operations in both North and South America. She did this with humility, hard work, and a few tests along the way. I have a really clear memory of, of being a co-op student at Alabama Power and going into a coal-fired power plant the first time. And there's always a section of the plant that the men will walk you across to see if you're afraid of heights because there'll be a section of grading that'll shift. And I was, honestly, I was terrified because in a power plant, it's just grading. It's, you can see from the top seven levels down all the way to the bottom floor. And when that piece of grading shifts, you think, oh my God, here we go. But I think the key is, one, to take the initiation, and second, not to, not to let people know you're afraid, and third, get over it. This is what you want to do, you got to get over it. I think the first time I really thought about it was a field experience as a co-op at Alabama Power. There's a gentleman there named George Howard who was well older than my parents were, so maybe even close to a grandparent age person to me at, at 19. And we went out to survey one day up at the Gorgas power plant. And we, we drove up there and he said, co-op has to carry the transit. And I said, okay. So I get it, you know, get it up on my shoulders and here we go, tromping through the woods. And we had stopped at a quick shop and he said, we're gonna smoke cigars to keep the mosquitoes out of our nose and ears and eyes. And I said, okay. So we go out with a swisher sweep, cost a nickel, and the transit and tromp out through the woods. And we did our work. We got back to the car and I remember it like it was yesterday. We put the stuff in the car and he walked around and opened the door for me to get in. Now what a message is that to a 19 year old? You can be an engineer, you gotta do the work, you gotta make your, you gotta make your place, but you can still be a young lady. And what a precious gift that was for him to do that. And I think that's kind of colored everything I think about it. And that's what I would tell young women today, that you don't have to give up yourself and who you are and being feminine and perhaps beautiful if you are. But if you want to be an engineer, you got to get the work done. And you got to fit into the environment that you're working in. Actually, I say doing projects is like having babies. I have never had a baby, but it's like having babies because if you could remember how hard it was, after you did it, you would never do it again. But the joy of the outcome erases all of that pain and struggle and all that stuff, and you sign up to do it again all the time. Throughout her career, Melissa has gained the respect of countless colleagues with her leadership management skills and her ability to put people in positions where they can succeed. I've known Melissa for approximately 25 years and watched in admiration as she collaborated with, inspired, and led her associates and colleagues to address broad, tough, and complicated organizational, technical, and sometimes politically sensitive challenges and achieve remarkable and lasting improvement results. She has the unique gift of humor, compassion, and team building skills coupled with intellect, 
work ethic, integrity, creativity, and determination. Uh, I first met uh, Melissa probably in the midpoint of, of uh, her career uh, when she was tasked with combining five different philosophies worldwide international companies into one uh, project management organization with a, a, a consistent project standard. One of my first observations with Melissa is how much she gives back both to Auburn University and to the engineering and construction industry at large. I remember playing golf with Melissa one morning in the mountains north of Phoenix and I was driving the cart. After bouncing her, or almost bouncing her, out of the cart a couple of times, she looked over at me and said very seriously, if I die here, my Robert's going to kick your butt. Lissa Hurt was always the chief morale officer. She was the one with a smile on her face, the twinkle in her eye, the one that kept us on task. I learned so much from her about how to manage complex matters, complex situations, and how to do it with a sense of humor. And Auburn University should be so proud to have someone like Melissa being an alum of Auburn University. She is such a credit in every way to this great university. There's, there's a difference between motivating people and inspiring people. And there's lots of ways to motivate people, but to inspire them, I believe you have to be inspired yourself. And that comes usually from inside you. And I think, male or female, being able to speak to people in a way that they'll understand so that they want to get on the bus and go on the journey that you're taking is something that's so important. It's so important because in the end, I never picked up a tool on a construction site. Not one but we got stuff built. Melissa's list of firsts for women in the world is long, but that fails in comparison for her desire to give back to others. I really want to have impacted either people or organizations in a way that lasts. But really, I have a debt to repay. And I think that's what's under all of it to make sure other people have the chance I have. And if one young person is inspired or motivated to do more than they thought they could do, that's it. <laughs>